Hi, I wanted to quickly go through the IRB proposal and show you some common mistakes or things that could be improved. I'm going to use um, an existing IRB proposal, one that has uh, several mistakes, as one that another student did that um, probably has some good fixes or some good examples. So when you submit the IRB, there are a number of things that you need to submit all in one file, all in one PDF file. So you need to include a title page, a table of contents, form B. You also need to include the research project des description or what we call the IRB proposal as well as the relevant attachments. Let's take a look at this student's form B. So you can see here the research project title is not correct. What the student is actually um, looking at is if we go down to their research project description is that they're actually looking at the relationship between uh, alcohol use and physical activity. So a better title would be the relationship between alcohol use and physical activity among college students. Another thing that uh, is an error here is you can see that the name of the department, the Department of Public Health, is not correct. Uh, the department that I work in is the Department of Public Health Sciences, and you can see there are two errors there. If this was a thesis, the student would need to make sure they click on this box rather than this box. Make sure that you understand that you'll need actual signatures from both the faculty advisor and the dean if you ever submit this to the IRB. Let's go take a look at the project description. The first thing that this IRB proposal is lacking is a title page. It should have a APA style title page including a running head as well as the name of the study, the fact that it's an IRB proposal, the student's name, um, the affiliation as well as the date that it was submitted. In general the table of contents is okay. Um, I can see that the applicant used the Microsoft Word table of contents function. This is important that you use this rather than just typing out a table of contents. However, one of the things that this table of contents is lacking is all of uh, these um, level two headers are present. We only need to use the level one heading. So for example, this table of contents might be better is if we just had the form B, the project description, and then all of the attachments. If we scroll down to the actual proposal itself, we can see again uh, needs to have a little bit better title that's uh, descriptive. If we go down to the abstract, primarily in the abstract you want to say what your purpose of the study is, how you're going to collect the data, the fact that you're going to get consent, and how the data will be analyzed. Here we can see that the applicant correctly put in the research researchers hypothesis but in fact um, the hypothesis is not correct the student is actually not looking at cause and effect that alcohol increases the number of times people engage in physical activity in fact what the student is really trying to do is look at the relationship between alcohol use and uh, physical activity and that relationship should be explicitly stated in the actual hypothesis. So a better way to word this would be uh, it is hypothesized that there is a negative relationship between the frequency of alcohol use and the number of times students engage in physical activity. In other words, what the investigator is trying to look at is if alcohol use goes up they're hypothesizing that the frequency or the number of days in this case that people exercise goes down. There's no need to state the null hypothesis. In the next section you're supposed to describe the population and sample and here this should be in paragraph form. Um, the information is mostly correct here um, but we need to t look at a, a better way of formatting this. So let's take a look at another student's IRB proposal. 
So we can see here we have the title of the study, the abstract, we can see they tell the purpose of the study, eligibility requirements, how they're going to collect data and recruit, how they're going to get consent, and then they tell that the IRB that this is going to be for a thesis. Here are the hypotheses, and here is the description of the intended population. They say the sample is going to be male and female college students between the ages of 18 and 99 years at four universities in Southern California. They explicitly state that only adults are eligible to participate. You can see they've calculated sample size here using G power, and they've also explicitly told the IRB that there are no other eligibility requirements. You can see that this whole section is in paragraph form. If we take a look at this section on procedures for informing uh, consent or obtaining inf informed consent, we can see that it's woefully inadequate. Um, this would be a very huge red flag to the IRB. Um, it simply states that you're going to get consent and you're going to read a consent form. What needs to occur here is it, we need to um, explicitly write how you're going to get their informed consent, particularly indicating to the IRB that you're going to explain all eight required elements and how you're going to explicitly get that consent. Are you going to get it verbally? Are they going to check a box? Are they going to sign a, a form? How are you going to do that? Let's take a look at how this other student did it. So the first thing um, the student writes is how they got access to the um, students. So they're going to get the instructor's permission and then they talk about the consent form itself, including all of the eight required um, components. In this case, the student's going to be collecting data in two different ways. One's going to be a paper and pencil survey, and the second way they're going to use an online uh, program to collect data. And so they explicitly tell the IRB that the consent form is exactly the same. Here, the IRB wants to know whether or not you're going to be doing this study in concert with another person or another organization, and this is very good here. It simply states that it's not going to be conducted with another university. Um, there's no deception that occurring. There's no treatment going on here in terms of manipulation of an independent variable. In Section 9, um, this asks you to address how you're going to collect the data, specifically what are your data collection instruments. Um, this is not complete uh, either and would also be a big red flag. Let's take a look at what this other student did. So this student states how they're going to collect the data, either through a self-administered paper and pencil survey or they're going to collect data online depending on what the instructor of each of the classes that they've recruited uh, wants them to do. Um, they've told the IRB that it takes about uh, 20 minutes to complete. They got that through pilot testing with three students. And then it explicitly talks about the different uh, questionnaires or scales or items that are used. So the survey includes, includes measures related to attitudes and beliefs. They cite the Santa Clara Strength of Religious Faith questionnaire as well as a college health risk assessment. Um, this could be a little bit stronger if they talked about how uh, students respond to some of these items or maybe gave some examples of the items itself. If we go back to the first one, um, the next thing it talks about is how are you going to ensure the subject's privacy? So this is good. It's going to be anonymous because they're not going to put their name on it. Um, how are you going to um, keep it safe? You're going to lock it up. Uh, those types of things. In the next section, um, identifying the foreseeable risks and distress, you say the participants may experience emotions regarding their behavior. Well, what type of uh, emotions and how are you going to mitigate those? So you have to be very explicit about what the risks are and what you're going to do to keep those risks low, either severity of those risks or the probability of those uh, risks uh, occurring. Let's look at what this other student wrote. So this student uh, explicitly states there's only minimal psychological risks. There's no physiological risks. The psychological risks are associated with a distress on reflection on past behavior or future intention. 
and they really go through in a nice way of explaining how they're going to minimize these risks. So the first thing they're doing is going to get people's consent and give people the opportunity to decline participation. They're going to brief them uh, first. They're going to tell them that the survey is voluntary and they can stop at any time. They can tell them that the survey is uh, anonymous. And then they're also going to provide uh, information to contact the Riverside Helpline and the contact of the faculty advisor and the IRB chair if any distress uh, occurs. We've talked about that there's no follow-up assessments or procedures, but what you need to address here is not that the fact there's going to be follow-up assessments, is what are you going to do if people do experience stress or harm or something like that. And you can see here um, the student has reiterated the fact that you're giving them a resource that they can contact on their own, but they could also get information regarding the faculty advisor, and if any dis anything happens in terms of the PI, the researcher knows that something occurred, somebody had an adverse event, um, you have to re uh, record that and submit that um, using the adverse event reporting form to the IRB. Here, the IRB wants to know how you're going to analyze and disseminate the research. You have to give them your analytic plan. They don't need to know you're going to um, draw conclusions or you're going to use appropriate statistical analyses. They want to know exactly how you're going to analyze your data. Are you going to use a t-test, ANOVA, correlation, what are you going to do? And then how you're going to disseminate that research. So let's take a look at what this other uh, student said. So the student said, I'm going to enter the data into SPSS. It's going to be a password protected file um, to test the different hypothesis. T-test is going to be used and that they're going to make a written uh, manuscript in the form of a uh, thesis. In terms of the uh, attachments, you want to make sure that in your document itself that you make reference to all of your attachments as appropriate. So what you can see here is that the student has made a reference to um, their instrumentation as well as their consent form. So see attachment three, see attachment two, um, however it may be. Those need to be in there so that you are, are moving the person's eye to the actual attachments. The other issue with this particular IRB here is that you should have written your own consent form. Um, I wrote this consent form, and you certainly don't want to just copy another person's consent form. You can see that the survey itself is here, which is good. Um, this is probably not needed, but you could make reference to the fact that, hey, you've already contacted all of these faculty members, and they've said you could come in. However, you'd want to have some type of uh, letter of support, or you might want to have um, some at least an email so the IRB knows that they've given you permission. Remember anytime you say anything in a document, particularly an IRB document, you want to make sure that you have evidence to support what you're saying. Here's the NIH Certificate for Human Subjects Research. This is required by the IRB that you provide this so that they know that you have been trained in human subjects uh, research. And you can see there's that one person's there. There's their sample survey as well. Make sure that this is formatted appropriately and there's no spelling mistakes uh, as well. So this was an example of uh, two different IRB proposals. One that needed some uh, extensive revision as well as one that's probably a little bit well written. Again, Make sure that you have one document, it's a PDF, make sure you spell check it, make sure you read through the whole thing to make sure that there are no typos, make sure all the required elements are there. This will save you a lot of time um, and uh, keep the number of revisions that are needed or clarifications that are required to a minimum. As always, if you need help writing your IRB proposal, if you have questions, I encourage you to go see your faculty advisor or your class professor during their office hours.